Okay. I'm going to give it a few seconds and hopefully you can hear me okay. And I'll be sharing in a few minutes. This is my second try at this today, so hopefully it will work. <laughs> today I'm going to share on from my book, The Supernatural Transforming Power of Communion. I'm going to be sharing chapter 6, and it's about feasts on me. And this is one of my favorite chapters. I have, okay, this has like 11 chapters in it, I think, and about four of them are my favorite chapter, are life-changing. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Feast on Him is this chapter. And this basically, okay, everything started with food. In the garden, they were told not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if they ate from the tree, that it would result in death. Okay, so this is really cool. Putting it together, eating what you eat is important. And that's not just physically, that's for your spirit, soul, and body. What you eat gives you nutrition and gives you life, or what you eat gives you death and kills you. Okay? So it all started with what they ate. Because of what they ate, it produced death. Now, Jesus is also eating. Communion is about eating eating eat my flesh and drink my blood so you're changing your seed you're changing what your your resources are you're changing where you're getting new, your nutrition from so you're taking a physical act of the life and death and beating of Jesus and taking and the spiritual effect and taking a physical piece of food and drink and <clears throat> And consuming it, eating it, physically eating it, just like they physically ate the forbidden fruit or the fruit that they choose to eat that would cause death. So communion is really, really more important than what we give it credit for. And so is eating. And I'm going to talk about that now. So it says um, in Psalms 23, 5, it says, You have prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I can go in all different directions here, but I'm going to try to stay on target and I probably should grab me a pen because I know I'm going to have some different ideas so <laughs> give me a second while I grab a pen <laughs> I, I hate to do that but sometimes you know God talks to me that's that's one of my reasons that I love teaching so much or sharing so much because the more I share the more I get same with you. Write a book because the, the, I've written 50 books so far. The more you share, the more revelation you get. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're sharing money or a smile or joy or peace or the word of God. The more you share, the more you get. So I share revelation that I get. So it becomes revelation for you. And so it changes your life. Okay. So <clears throat> food is given to us not just to enjoy visually uh, how we perceive, hear it, see it, smell it, and taste it to our physical senses, but it also gives our physical body nutrients to grow and to mature. And same thing spiritually. So, and when we come to a table, a table is designed to give us a variety of food that is is pleasant to the eyes, that is, is, is healthy for us, and is pleasing to us. So the coming to the table is a place to get strength and nourishment and also to be served. Okay, so Jacob was served with food and water from an angel for his journey. And that's, I'm not going to read that scripture, but as 1 Kings 19 and 6. Uh, so he laid down a second time and the angel woke him up and told him to eat. Okay, so what he ate... The communion that he, I believe it's a representative of communion. <clears throat> the communion or what he ate gave him physical strength. So eating is important. And uh, a place to receive 
the table is a place to receive whatever you need. He said in the presence of your enemy. He sets the table in the presence of your enemy. Here on earth now. Everything Jesus did is for now. A lot of people say, oh, I'm born again. I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. It's not just about then. It's about now. Okay. Uh, so the bread that falls from the table in, uh, in one of the scriptures that talks about a lady who came to get healing for her daughter. And Jesus said that this is for this group of people only, not for you. And she says, well, even the dogs get the breads that fall from the, the table. Uh, so healing is for everybody. Okay. Uh, in Matthew 15, uh, well, Matthew 15, something I, I have to fix that. There's a mistake in that scripture. Uh, uh, that's where uh, she said about the children's bread that it belonged to, you know, even, even the dogs got the crumbs. Okay. So healing is uh, what you eat produces life in you. In uh, Exodus 24, 9, 11, Moses and the 70 people went up, physically went up to heaven and physically with their eyes saw God. That's Exodus 24, 9, 11. And that is available for us today because we are the household of God. Um, we are children of God. We are family and that's available to us. But when they were up there, they ate and drank with God. Okay. I thought that was pretty cool. This is kind of a longest chapter. So I'm probably going to skim over some of this till I get to the real meat. Uh, <clears throat> we have a better covenant than, than the old covenant. Uh, let's see. When we have communion, we can expect God, Jesus, Holy Spirit to eat with us. We don't just go and eat and, and, and that's it. You can expect God to eat with you. And communion is supernatural nutrition. Okay. In John 6, 27 and 23, it says, for the bread of God, which comes down from heaven, gives life to the world and life in the strong concordance. And I went over this yesterday in my teaching is uh, G2222, Zoe, absolute fullness of life, an active and vigorous life. So what does that mean to you? Health from coronavirus, health from whatever plague is going around, uh, you, you renewed youth, strong, healthy, whole, nothing, missing, nothing, broken. The power and the body of Christ taken in communion is supernatural nutrition. Um, you see, when God looked at man, and all his problems in this fallen world, he said he had one solution, one solution. And that solution was Jesus. Okay. John six thirty five talks about how he's the bread of life and that you will never hunger. And in that scripture, it's in the strongest concordance, it says to be, to suffer want or to be needy. And when he says, you'll never thirst, it says those who thirst painfully feel their want and eager for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. That's really, really interesting. And John 6, 50 talks about the bread that comes down from heaven. Uh, if you eat of it, you will not die. And uh, die means to die of a natural death, a violent death of a man or an animal, to perish by means of something. I don't know what that is. Um, like a tree, the seed drying up and being rotten. That's pretty interesting. See, Jesus is the seed. Um, death is the result of sin. Adam and Eve sinned by eating the tree of death, and it produced death on everything on the earth and everything that was under our authority. But the blood of Jesus gives that gives life back to us. Okay, so communion is, is so awesome. Six uh, John 6, 53 and 58 talks about if you eat my blood and eat my body and drink my blood that you have life in you. And if you don't, you have no life. So I have heard stories of people who were on the deathbed and took communion. And because somebody taught them about the life of Jesus and they took communion and they came, they, they lived and they came back. So there's lots of scriptures on that and you can go through that. I'm not going to go through all that here. Um, let's see. Uh, Oh, he also talks about if you eat his flesh and drink his blood, that he dwells in you. And the word dwell means not to depart, to continue to be present, to remain as one. I thought that was really interesting. And he talks about, if you look up all the communion scriptures about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, he talks about how he'll live in you, <clears throat> make alive, according to the Strong's Accordance, by spiritual power to arouse, invigorate, to restore to life, to give increase of life, thus physical life. 
and it goes on. It talks about that. Communion is like getting a blood transfusion. Look up what happens when you get a blood transfusion and study uh, how uh, when people get drug, uh, uh, get um, body parts put in on my kid. <laughs> when I'm teaching, it's like all of a sudden my mind goes blank of what the word I want to say. Um, a trans, not a transfusion, but a <laughs> somebody's going to write it there probably. Uh, when you get someone else's body part, like you get a heart transplant. That's what it is, a body transplant. Uh, their DNA goes into you and some weird stuff happens sometimes. You have m thoughts, memories, history, or whatever um, that is carried in that DNA of that uh, body, tra uh, you know, body parts. And the same thing with blood, transfu tra blood transfusion. Now, the banqueting table is a banqueting table that you're supposed to feast on the body. Well, what does it mean? To be the body of Christ. Now, did you ever really put this together and think about this? Okay, I kind of taught about this a little bit before. Um, we First Corinthians twelve twenty seven talks about how we are the body of Christ. Okay, um, your neighbor is the body of Christ. You're the body of Christ. I'm the body of Christ. Ephesians five thirty talks how we are flesh of his members of his body and flesh of his flesh and bones of his bone. In other words, we are the flesh and the bones and the body of Jesus walking on the earth today because his spirit is living in us and his same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us and makes alive our body and infuses us with power and makes us a life giving spirit. We give life out. Okay. So we are the body of Christ. He's the head and we are the body. Now bread is to give nourishment and whatever we need to succeed, to understand something, to have skill, strength, health, wisdom, or prosperity we can receive from the body, okay? So one thing I do when I take communion is I'm a hockey player. And so I find hockey players that are Christians and that are really excelling in what they do. And I receive from the body the impartation of their skill, their ability, their strength, and all that because we're the same body. That's why it's so important to walk in love because when you hurt somebody else, you're really hurting your own body because we're all one body. And that's why love is so important. And um, so I receive from the body things that I need. When I come to the communion table and I need wisdom on something, I think of somebody who has that wisdom and I acknowledge the wisdom that they have. And I, I receive that wisdom for myself. So in Romans 12, 5, it says, we are many, we are one body, we are members of one another. And Jesus is in God and God is in Jesus and Jesus is in us. And we're sitting at the right hand of God and we're one. Okay, so we being many are, okay, in 1 Corinthians 10, 17, it says, we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. It's really cool. You got to take a look at that scripture. So when we're taking communion, we're receiving the absolute fullness of life in every way that you can think of. We're the body of Jesus on the earth today. And as the body, we have access to each other's success and victories. Your victory is my victory. Uh, one part of the body is... Okay, one part of the body is a part and all parts have access to that part. The hand cannot live without the tongue or the, the body or the arm and so on. So we are all one body. So as we take communion, we are receiving from the body of Christ and of what Jesus actually did on the cross. Um, we have the mind of Christ. We are healed by his stripes. And I think in, I don't think it's in this chapter, but in one of the other chapters I go over, my favorite uh, scripture that really talks about what the body and the blood of Jesus did for us. So, um, um, 10, uh, first Corinthians 12, 12 talks about the body has many members. And so do some research on that. Um, as he is, so are we also wherever, the, whatever the body has, we have, we, when we walk in love, love, we are helping our own body. So walking in love is, is really important. We're baptized into one body. Uh, Jesus actually died as us, in our place as us. And when we are, we are buried in Christ, 
and we are a brand new creature. And, and when you meditate on that, it's, it's really exciting when you get a revelation that you are a new creature. Just like um, your evidence of being healed is the word. Your, it says you, you all things are new when you're born again from above. And a lot of, in fact, there's a stupid song that says, I looked at my hands and they're still the same. I looked at my feet and they're still the same. Well, you're st everything is still the same unless you engage what Jesus' blood and body paid for you to have, unless you take what belongs to you. So it's it's not yours until you, I mean, it's yours, but you're not owning it until you possess it. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to go over all those scriptures because you can look it up. Um, one of the teachings you want to look up is Kirby Del Delano. Kirby, Kirby Delano. I can't even say it. He's my pastor. Uh, in, overseas and it's wildlife church and he teaches a lot in, on the subject of of life and um, his stuff is really really awesome he's my pastor and I absolute him and love him and and his wife so anyway um ha, okay this is some of the revelation that God gave me heavenly medicine and vitamins this is uh, the body and the blood of Jesus is vitamins minerals and nutrition and everything that you need oh my nose it's just mm, everything that you need to um be physically and spiritually healthy for example you think a green smoothie is nourishing and healthy to your body but the green smoothie is saying son of god manifest as a son of god and release me into the blessing so i can give you life so in other words, whenever you eat a food, this is what I do when I eat a food. I say, I, when I'm even cooking or going grocery shopping, I say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you died to give me life and give me health. Now, I get these groceries or I cook this food or I eat this food right now. And as a son of God, I bless this food to my body, that there would be no toxics in it that would hurt my body in any way, that everything in it would bring life and health to me. Because... You have to bring it under the blessing of the body and blood of Christ. And that's what it means to bless your food. You bring it under your authority and dominion as the son of God. Okay. You need to bless your food every time you cook it, buy it, or eat it. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Communion gives us power from the inside out. It gives us supernatural strength supernatural energy supernatural nutrition and that's really important i feel like i got a hair stuck here somewhere it's really important that as you take communion you just get a hold of these revelations when you eat the bread of life and drink the wine of heaven you receive everything that you eat it's like eating from the tree of life what's the goal and the purpose of communion well think of it this way with every worldly drug or medicine, there is an end result. So what does it do for you? Here are some of the things that taking communion does for you. It gives you the fullness of God. It's the seed, the testimony record, the power, the wisdom, and the DNA of Jesus. It bears the image of the face of God on, of image of God on the face of the earth. We've now been brought back into a perfect son, innocent, holy, just, pure, and above reproach, blameless. It's illegal for sickness, disease, poverty, lack, or fear, or any form of death or the death cycle to come on us, including aging. Okay, But you have to fight for this. It creates that you are born again of his seed, of his, seed his DNA living in you, restoring your DNA and your mind to come into 100% into what he is it transforms you into his image and likeness it has created the perfect harvest for his seed in me it, it causes you to be led by the spirit you are one with his spirit it, uh, you bear witness with his spirit you have understanding and leading of the holy spirit you receive heavenly life and purpose and power communion is the answer to everything that you need once you understand everything that the body and the blood of jesus did for you it is so awesome i love it okay so basically Jesus is the only thing, the body and the blood of communion is the only thing on this whole earth that is, that, that is not contaminated with the fall and the death cycle. So, and which I taught about in chapter two, a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago, about the life 
and death cycle, maybe even yesterday, I don't remember which one I did. Um, let's see. You have a legal right to own everything that was in the new covenant, but I mean the old covenant, but the new covenant covenant replaced the old covenant, and you have even more than that. And here are just a, a few things that I wrote down that happened because of the body and the blood of Jesus um, that we can have, taken from the Old and the New Testament. Uh, we can eat from heaven's resources. Adam, I mean, Abraham did that with 73 others. Um, Moses talked to God face to face. We have better. We can talk to God face to face. Poison food was made safe. Um, iron flowed it. Borrowed tools were found. Uh, protection, killing a lion and a bear with their bare hands. The language uh, of Babel was changed in an instant and groups of people understood themselves that had the same language. So that's wisdom, that's knowledge, that's ability to understand language. We can have conversations with angels. They always are talking to us. Um, and we can have meals with angels. And if you read the Bible, you'll see all that. Now there's an experiment I did about how our words uh, are um, not just frequency, but our words are manifested material that has power and that changes the physical realm and it's called um the rice experiment with a twist and it's on my youtube account so if you just type in on youtube the rice experiment with a twist you'll see a physical test i did with three bowls of rice and what happened when i spoke words over them okay so jesus as the wine the cup of wine the cup means to receive into the soul what is served to refresh strengthen and nourish with eternal life that's really powerful so the cup of the blessing the cup they said the cup of the blessing of the blood of jesus so it refreshes it strengthens it nourishes to eternal life forever life life of heaven life from heaven on earth and it it is all about joy okay he wants you to live drunk in the spirit okay it's compared to wine. Now, if drugs and alcohol can make you high and they are a copy of the joy of heaven, then don't get upset when people are laughing and drunk in the spirit because everything in the new age and everything on the earth that is good is a copy of, it could be bad, twisted and turned the good around. So Everything is a copy. Even earth is a copy of heaven. Okay. Wine causes laughter. Laughter re releases healing. Chemicals are released in the body that causes health and well-being when you laugh. And the blood of Jesus gives us joy. The wine of heaven. Okay. Communion is a partnership. And the cup of the blessing is communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread is communion with the body of Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 19. So communion is not just something you sit and do by yourself. You do it with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's it's communion, co-union. It's together, okay? You can expect them to show up. And um, that's, that, that's all on that subject. Okay, the blood um, is also for supernatural finances and debt cancellation. So if you look at Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it's he that gives thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant and that's the old covenant and we have even better yet so uh, we talked about when the israelites were released from the jewish he told them to ask their neighbors for jewelry of gold and silver and clothing and stuff from their house and they freely gave it to them so we can expect the same. Okay. So that is it in uh, chapter six. The next chapter. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this one next. Christ in me. I might do my other favorite chapter next. But that was chapter six. And that is all for today. So here comes my commercial. Um, first of all, if my videos are a blessing to you, please share them with your social media sites, with your friends and in your groups. It's a blessing to me because um, then people can get my books. This book is free right now to the Corona, cri Corona Crisis is Over. I'm offering this book free as a PDF download. Um, it's my newest book. My 
favorite book uh, out of the 50 that I have written. Uh, it is free as a PDF file. You do not sell it. It is copyrighted, so you can't use it for yourself. As far as profitable, you can share it, um, but it's mine. <laughs> um, and it is in Kindle form and it is in print form. But right now, the Kindle form, uh, the PDF form is free until after the Kindle crisis. And if you go to my website, robinbremer.net, you can also get several other books that I have written free in PDF form. And then also, if you go to Amazon, and uh, you can get every day until the crisis, Corona, till we're like released. And I live in Oklahoma, till we're allowed to go free. So most of the states are allowed to go out like normal. Um, I'm offering it a free Kindle book uh, every day until I, till it stops, until we get free for, to help people that are stuck in their houses to read and to grow in the word and to use their time wisely. Okay, so the commercial is, if you are an author right now, I have three, three openings. <laughs> um, I'm a publisher and a promoter especially of Christian books, especially of supernatural Christian books, for $399. I take your book file and I make it into a professional book. It includes the cover, the ISBN, and uh, I put it all together and I create an um, account for you on Amazon platform, publish it as a Kindle book, a print book, do all the formatting and everything, and uh, you have your book out there. I also promote books which is not included in the $399. The only the reason I only charge $399 is because that's what God told me to, to charge. Normally, very, very few people charge around $500. Normally, it costs a couple thousand to do what I do. Uh, but I paid $2,000 at one time to have my book published, and it was a nightmare. It wasn't worth it, and I don't want other people to go through this. I have the tools. I have the experience. I have the knowledge. I have the training to publish your book. Now is a great time to get your book out there. People are stuck. And it's great time to read books that um, teach them something or teach them who they are in Christ. So that is my commercial. My other commercial is um, I sell and have available and teach on how to be toxic free body, spirit, and soul. So I am uh, connected with an essential oils company that is toxic free, pesticides free, chemical free. That also has products that are oil infused, um, vitamins, minerals, baby products, pet products, sports products, health products, and essential oils, which I absolutely love. And that strengthen your body. And um, that's all I can say legally because the FDA does not want you to claim that anything can heal anything. It's illegal. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that it strengthens and... Um, it strengthens and helps your immune system. So if you want to support my ministry in any way um, and you want to support your body, you can enroll uh, and um, and I will help you to be successful and teach you how to teach about toxicity and give you tools, that books that I have written about it that is so easy. You just hand out to people. Um, anyway, um, you can support my ministry by, by getting involved in opening up people's eyes and how to use uh, toxic free essential oils and products or if you need essential oils to strengthen your body uh, during this outbreak um, you can order them from me or you can get involved however you want to do it or you can go to my uh, PayPal and donate through that if you want to now when I'm saying donating I'm saying plant a seed and believe for a harvest okay I pray over the checks and the money that people give me. I pray for harvest for them because they're sowing into my ministry. And in turn, I sow into other people's ministries. I sow into people's ministries who have something I don't have that I want. In other words, somebody um, like my church, I sow into them uh, because I want the revelation of of grace and and the revelation that Kirby has and Fiona has. So I sow into their ministry. And I sow into other ministries. So you want to do the same. You reap what you sow. So anyway, that is the end of my commercial. So please share this with your social media sites and your groups and your friends. And uh, I'm always supposed to pray. So Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray that whoever 
here's what I had to share in this would get their own revelation and would go deeper and deeper and deeper in that revelation and just explode with understanding of who they are in Christ and the power of communion and how it can restore their health, how it can heal them, how it can uh, bring life where there's death, how it can restore marriages, how it can bring finances, that they would understand the power of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Talk to you later.